Hello and welcome to the third part of this series. If you want to check the previous ones, uh, there are some links in the description. This time we're going to be making some updates to the auto clickers. We're going to make the price a dynamic value and we're going to be also duplicating this element several times. So we have different tiers of auto clickers and stuff like that. I'm going to move all the code relevant to this element to itself instead of having it on the main one as we had it before. So let's go ahead and create a script, which is going to be autoclickers.vs, just the default that we have here is OK. And now let's go and open main visual script, which is the one that we had before. And here we have the on auto clicker pressed. So this one. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's select everything. Control C. Oh, oh no. OK, we cannot copy this function, but the rest ones we can copy. That's something. Yeah. Since this is the function definition, it seems like we're going to copy, but the rest of them we can. So let's go ahead and copy. And now on the auto clicker, let's select the function that we had here on this button. Here, instead of press, I'm going to disconnect it and I'm going to connect it again to this node instead of the main one. That way, whenever we press the button, instead of going to the main script, it will go to the auto clicker script. If you notice a difference uh, with previous videos in the new version of Godot, uh, they updated how this dialogue looks and I think it's much clearer. There's nothing new about it, but I think it's more simplified. So it's just better to understand. Uh, you can see here in blue is the node that has the signal and then you select the node that you want to have the method created. This method on button pressed, we want to have it on auto clickers. Now that we have it connected and we had everything copied, we can control V, which We'll paste it and we have everything. Now we can connect the function with the condition and everything. And this should be the same as it was before. On the main script, let's go ahead and remove the uh, on auto clicker press, which was the signal that we are not using anymore from before. Uh, so we don't get confused. And now we have the main one. The button press, which is the make something button. And here we have the on button press, which is this button inside the auto clickers. A little bit confusing, but yeah, let's go ahead and save it and try it out. Let's see if we have any issues with our program. OK, it's disabled. Uh, OK, now. Well, OK. The gets and the sets, they don't seem to be working as intended. Why is that? Since these variables were defined on the main script, you see here we have these variables. We need to have the auto clickers get the reference from the main node instead of the auto clickers node. And this is starting to get confusing really, really quick. That's why I think the best way to work with visual scripting is when you have a very simple task to achieve. Whenever you start making things complicated, code will always be a better way of doing that. So how can we get the variables from the other node? Well, remember we had exported those so we can try and drop. So if we click here on the main node and here on the inspector, we will get the count here and we can drag and drop. And this is the set count on that node and we can replace it with this one and if you drag and drop pressing the control you get the getter so we can get the count here okay let's replace the values here so a is going to be this and also we want to have it here we can remove this node we are now getting the correct one the auto clicker value now the set we can set it here here instead of 
having it there we have it and we replace this one we can remove this one okay and now the auto clicker if you remember this was also here on the variables which was handling all the, the how many auto clickers you had we're gonna have to move this one onto the new code here we can create the amount variable which will mean how many of this auto clicker we have enabled so instead of counting in all the auto clickers from the main one we're gonna be adding the amount from here now that we have the variable here we can replace it like so instead of getting the auto clicker we're getting this one the amount and instead of setting we control set the amount and we set the value here and this should be working okay we have replaced all those values let's go ahead now and do the weird bug thing fix okay now it's zero and we have this on press but we also want to have the timer affect the auto clicker node instead of the main node since we're gonna have many different auto clicker nodes we want to keep track of each auto clicker and its speed so we save we go back to here and on timer timeout this is another function that we have created for the main one from a node like this we're going to do basically the same let's go to the timer node let's disconnect the signal and connect it again but to the auto clicker node now let's copy all the code except the function declaration here on timer timeout which was the signal used before and to the new one so we have all these variables we already know from before and we have to replace them let's select the main the count we can have it here I'm gonna prepare the nodes first and the get by pressing control okay can remove this one and let's replace this one like this and the values are gonna be this one now auto clicker it was a variable we are not using anymore we're using this one so we get the amount oh sorry here and this should be happening now all the time and we can go to the main one and remove the timeout so goodbye timeout let's check if we had something here on as well yes the disabled we also need to handle this like if it's bigger than 10 like the count it's actually this part we need to handle it as well on the auto clickers so it was in the process function let's go to the auto clickers and create the process function so, well, sorry instead of creating one you can click here on the drawer and find the process here process now they have the process function let's copy this part okay we copy let's go to the auto clickers we paste it okay now we connect these two nodes again the count we need to get it from the main one we select the node and from here we press control and drop it we get the correct node okay so we're gonna replace these two as well because i want it to reference self instead of this node specifically so let's go ahead and select the auto clickers button and 
the disable here one which was false and again disabled which is going to be true and we connect it here okay i think we have everything now sorry if this part was confusing um but yeah this is also the life of somebody that is using visual scripting <laughs> let's try it out let's see if it works let's get to 10 and buy one okay but does not lead node what is happening here is that on the set text we have to update the reference on where this text is so let's select the label node and move the text as well again this happens because when you're selecting a node Godot is generating the path to that node relative to where the node that you're calling it from is what does this mean it means that if you're on main it's going to search for auto clickers and after you search for auto clickers it's gonna go to the label but if you're calling this same node from auto clickers it's gonna look for another child which is called auto clickers which it doesn't exist and that invisible thing is gonna call for a label which it doesn't exist either that's why you have to update the references if you are moving code from one visual scripting to another one and the paths are not the same so let's go ahead and replace this value okay let's rerun it again click hard and click it okay we have one auto clicker which is updating one value by second and yeah it seems to be working now let's update it we have two now it's getting two by the second three now by the second okay everything seems to be working as we had it before so that's it for all the changes we have to do and now we can start to separate this officially from the main scene okay let's save these auto clickers as save branch as a scene this will create a new scene with only that content let's call it auto clicker scene that's gonna be the name of it and as you can see here i cannot see the children anymore and there's like a movie clip like link uh, which if you click it it will open this auto clicker in a separate scene now that this is alone together alone in the world without any context whatsoever let's reset the position from the rect which is the distance from the start of the scene if you can see here is 30 pixels and 92 y so if you press here on the reset it's gonna go to the corner that way whenever you create at the node this scene into another place you're not going you're not going to have that offset okay let's save the scene and it's gonna be moved moved here also all this will be of course fixed if instead of just drag and dropping like i'm doing right now you are actually using container nodes but we're not gonna be using them right now okay now that we have the auto clicker as a separate scene i can duplicate it okay I duplicate it and i have another one and i have another one and yeah as many as you want that way when you play the game you can have a lot of auto clickers and this is starting to look more similar to what a clicker game is right like you have different options with different prices and yeah you can start buying all of them and i don't have to really like have to reference the new ones a lot or anything like that because they are all clones of this one so as long as we continue upgrading this new scene all of this will update as well 
the first thing I want to do is to add the price as a variable instead of just a number. So let's go ahead and open the script and create a new variable here. Let's close the output. Let's create a new variable, which is going to be the price. Uh, let's edit. It's going to be an integer. We do the fix. Okay. So this is going to be the price of this auto clicker. Let's set it to five. So it's a different value and we can check it. And now every time we have here the 10, which is what we were checking before, we have to add it, update it to this value to five. So let's get it. We're getting the price and we replace it here. So now this is going to be five. We do the same here or remember we can drag and drop the value to this one as well. I think this would be easier if the lines were not crossing that much but okay the position is clear like we don't need anything fancy here okay i don't have any 10 here nope this is okay this part is ready this was the on button press function let's go to the timer timeout we don't see anything here with any 10 let's go to the process here we have a 10 which is like checking if we can uh buy or not and let's drag it here okay so now that we have the price we also will need to update the label here we have the label here as a 10 on the button looks kind of ugly let's remove it from there and let's create a new label which it's going to be called price and this label will be price equal five. Okay. Some custom color, font color is going to be like, I don't know, green. Yeah. Okay. This is the price now. Let's update now this value. Like I hard coded the price here by typing it but we want to set it dynamically so on the auto clicker let's go to the functions and here on the process function let's update the label so we get the level price we drag and drop the text and now here we have like the string value we want to get the price like what is the price value in this case five and if you remember here we do something similar which is getting it and transforming it to a string so let's go back and we transform this one to a string string where is this string int here okay so now we're gonna have it as text and we also need to add the string value which we're gonna create a new variable for which is gonna be price string let's edit Remember, string value price equals and a space. Okay. So if we get the value and we add math add, we get the price equals and the five, and we set it to the scene text okay if we want to continue the process process is going to come to the condition the condition is going to be checking if it's true or false for the disable and then it's going to continue with the done so we want to do this after we check that so we continue the program 
and now we are setting all the time the label depending on that value. Why is this important? Because if we want to modify now the price for each of the auto clickers, we want to update that all the time. And we know that the price on every clicker game is only going to go up. So the last thing we have to do now is on the price variable, edit and export it. Okay. So remember when we export a variable, we can see it from the inspector as a script variable. Here we have it. Price five. Okay. Let's try it out like this. Let's see if it's working or if I missed something. Okay. Now it only should cost five. And okay. I th it seems like I forgot something. I think it's checking for the 10 in some other place. When I click on the button, let's see. Let's see how much set the amount here. A minus B. What am I getting? The price? Hmm. This is tricky. Why is it not happening? Oh. Here we have a 10. Why do we have it here? Get the count, set disabled. Think we should remove this part, right? This is happening on the other one, so we don't really need it. Okay, this wasn't mine. Okay, button press. Okay, this should be fine. Auto clickers. Let's see. We're getting the count. We're getting the price. Where is the conditional? Here is the conditional. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see if we go to 10 if it's still happening. Yeah, I can buy if it costs 10. Oh, what, what was that? Okay, it seems like that other part was confusing. <laughs> the, the main script was uh, confusing the, the other button. Okay. We have it working now like we wanted. So what can we do with all this confusing stuff? I hope you're following this. If not, I'm going to be answering all your questions on the comments. So leave a comment and I'll do my best to help you with any questions you might have. But yeah, now that we have all this set up, we can set the price for each of them from the inspector here. And since now we know that it's going to be updating, we can set the first one to 5, the second one to 10, the third one to, I don't know, 15, uh, this one is going to be 20, and this one is going to be 100. Okay, let's try it out, and we see different prices for all the auto clickers. Let's see if we only have 5, only this one is available. If we have 10, this one is starting to be available, 15, 20, and I'm not going to click 100 times right now, but let's do what auto clickers do best, which is buy stuff. Let's start buying stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, as you can see here, now that we have 100, it's available and you might already be able to think on what we can do next, which is another principle of clicker games. How much the auto clicker is going to be augmenting this value. Right now, all of them are only adding one. and that every time that we buy one upgrade the price is gonna go up those values we're gonna set them on here as a script variable so we can continue to edit them from the inspector like these ones and once we have all that we might already have a fully fledged clicker game ready for us to now select a theme and start adding some graphics and things like that 
If you want to get the code for this tutorial, I'm gonna be leaving it for my Patreons. If you want to help me continue with this series, please consider being a Patreon, because it's thanks to my Patreons that I'm able to do these videos. And if not, I'm gonna be releasing the code when I finish the series anyways, so just remember to subscribe to know when that happens. Thank you very much everyone, see you next time on the part 4 of the visual scripting and clicker game tutorials. Bye.